So this is a uh, three quarter, one and three quarter ounce Super Strike needlefish. You know, they're making them in all sizes. There's a really small one, there's a medium sized one. This is the largest. Um, they also have them loaded. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of different needlefish out there. I would say 90% of the time I'm th throwing Super Strike. It's just because of the conditions I fish, it's a great plug. You can knock it around, it's plastic, hits the rock, it keeps going. Also, the sink rate. The sink rate of Super Strike needlefish is about like this. You know, other needlefish, like uh, say, um, maybe in the after hours, it's, it's a little bit less. So, you know, it's, it, it, it sinks not as fast as the Super Strike. So Super Strike's like this, after hours may be like that. And that can make a big difference. So in some situations, I'll use the after hours over the Super Strike. Um, plus, it's a little bit different profile, a lot of needlefish. They're, they're thicker or they're thinner. You know, I like the Super Strike because it's a thin profile bait. And it, it imitates a lot of the thin, it, it thinner baits. Needlefish, um, spearing, sand eels. It's a great plug when sand eels are around. And there's so much you can do with it. I do not like the floating uh, needlefish at all. I hardly ever use them. Yes, there's, I know there's a tons of places for the floating needlefish, and a lot of guys kill on a floating needlefish. But I can get this thing riding up, and I can float it. I got to go a little bit faster to float it, but I can float it just like a floating needlefish. It just is way more versatile than that. And I'm going to show you a few things you can do with it. It's just an awesome plug. It's always in my bag. The Super Strike Needlefish is always in my bag no matter what I do. And it, it might be a, a small one in there, a big one, a medium sized one, but I always have a few in my bag. Sometimes that's all I throw. In the spring when the sand deals are around, that's practically all I throw is a, a Super Strike Needlefish. I'm going to show you a couple things. Um, the first thing I like to show you is using it almost like a pencil popper. Uh, I, I'll tell you a little story after I show you about this. All right, you want to cast it out, get the rod between your legs, lock, lock the rod in between your legs. You want to lock it in between your legs, get your hand up here just like you're using a pencil popper. Get it riding on the surface, and it's just little tiny taps. Well, see that little tiny taps? I'm going slow with it. it it'll keep, even though it sinks, the Super Strike darter sinks. When you get it riding on the surface, it'll stay on the surface as long as you're going at a certain speed. And I'm tapping it, and what this is doing, it's going ding, 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 but not hard. If you, if you tap it hard, it'll be, it'll be too hard at night, and I, I find the fish won't hit it. I don't know if it's, they can't follow it, I don't know what it is, but you don't want to go too hard at night. And, and that will make the Super Strike uh, needlefish just back and forth, back and forth. It's a good technique when the water temperatures are really cold, and you don't want that big splash during the daytime in the early spring. You know, a big splash meaning from like a uh, pencil popper. A pencil popper, boom, 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 goes back and forth, spraying water all over the place. This is not going to spray water all over the place, and you'll get the same effect, that back and forth, boom, 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 with, with the needlefish. Only you won't have that big spray all over the place. So just a little story. One time, I. Tommy Corrigan from the Surfcasters Journal. He's doing. We we went out. We're doing some filming. It was a really stormy night, and uh, we didn't get the film that we wanted because it was just pissing rain, and we we just did not get any fish in the daytime. So nighttime came. Everything calmed down, and there were bass on needle uh, bass on sand eels all over the place. So I'm fishing with them. I'm casting out. And I'm doing that technique I just showed you. I'm, get, I'm getting contact with it right away. I'm just using it as a pencil popper, only he can't see what I'm doing. So he's just going straight with it. And I'm getting fish every friggin' cast, every cast. It's, <laughs> it's time he's going, he's going, oh, you make me look like a fucking amateur. He's getting all pissed off. I thought he was going to throw his rod in, in, in the water. I wouldn't tell him, though. I wasn't going to tell him what I was doing. So I gave him about 15 minutes, in 15 minutes I almost had a freaking dozen fish. And finally I'm like, Tommy, come here. It's like, all you gotta do is, you know, all you gotta do is this little technique. As soon as he started doing that, he had one fish after another to the point, you know, we stayed, I don't know, like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Tom, man, I gotta go. I gotta go to work in the morning. He wanted to stay because we were catching so many fish. But after he did that technique, he was just on. So that little, that little trick 
can be the difference between not catching and catching. Uh, another little uh, thing you can do with a needlefish, say you're onto a uh, spearing bite. They're spearing all over, you're like in the back bays, or even a worm bite, very similar. To if there's a worm hatch and the fish are just coming in and sucking on that spearing, and you can hear them when they're sucking on the spearing. It's not like a splash, it's like a whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, they're like sucking it in. You'll, you'll know the difference right when you hear it. If you've, if, I mean, if you heard them like it break on like a sand deal as opposed to uh, uh, spearing or worms, you know, you'll hear that sound. But anyway, what they're doing is just they're coming up and they're sucking it in. And if they really feel the plug, they'll just let go. So what you got to do in that situation, what I like to do, get your contact with it and uh, keep it riding up. You got to go kind of fast, keep it riding up. And now it's just a pull back. It's not a down, it's not a down and up. It's just you're pulling back, pulling back. And what that's doing with the needlefish, the needlefish is coming like this and it's falling. It's coming, it's falling, it's coming, it's falling. And usually on that little fall, just it's just very subtle. On the little fall, they'll hit it. But the trick is, on that type of bite, you know, you'll, you'll get a lot of misses. Unless you, you, unless you do this, it, it, the plug falls, the fish hits, and you just gotta drop it for a second when he hits. Just drop your rod, just for a second, and go up with it. If you get the timing down right, you'll have like, <laughs> you'll like 10 fish to the, to the next guy next to you is one fish because it, he'll just be getting the hits, but he's not dropping his rod. When they suck it in, you just gotta drop it. You gotta almost like feed it to them, like an eel, but it's gotta be a split second. You pull up, you pull up or drop it too long, they'll feel it and they'll spit it out. So let's talk about a little trick that Musso taught me a long time ago. Donnie Musso, he's the inventor of the Super Strike plug. So um, all you do is stick out your finger, whoops. Stick out your finger and let the line slap the tip of your finger really hard. See that? And what that's going to do is it make, make the uh, needlefish wobble. I was with Don one time on, uh, on uh, shag one and he was doing that. I had no idea what he was doing. He was killing the fish. I wasn't catching anything. I looked down and that's what he was doing. That's when he showed me it. So uh, let's see. What else do you do with a needlefish? Oh, another thing you can do with a needlefish, I mean, the, the heavy the heavy needlefish, they come loaded to, is it three ounces? I think it's three ounces. Um, the heavy the heavy needlefish, they're marked, the heavy super strike needlefish, they're marked by a red eye. This one has a yellow eye, it's not loaded. However, you can load them. I mean, you can load the hell out of them. I usually like to load them in a rear chamber, just put, uh, you can put BBs in them, you can put lead shot. I use lead shot from like a 12 gauge shotgun, that's what I use. It's really just, it's just a matter of taking a Phillips screwdriver, heating it, uh, making a hole in the rear chamber, and dumping in BBs in there. And, but, I mean, it's good in the inlets, it's good if you're fishing deep water like that. Um, another, another thing you can do with it on a, sand, on a sand beach is you can just drag it, you know? On a sand beach, you can let it sink, get your contact, let it sink, and just nice slow roll and just drag it. But you do that in Montauk or Rocky Beach, it's not going to happen. Rocky Beach, you got to get contact with it right away, and you got to keep it riding up. Once you get contact with it and have it riding up on the water, it will stay up as long as you're going at a certain speed. And this is about the speed I like to keep it riding up. Dad, to keep it riding up on the surface right there. Slow it down for one second, it's going to drop, it's going to be in the rocks. But on a sand beach, you can do whatever the hell you want with it. 